today I will be reading the last few pages of Stuart Goes to School. This will be pages 41 through 57. Day three. There should be a rule, Stuart thought, that if you are late to school, no one should talk about it. Being late is embarrassing enough. You are late this morning, Stuart, Mrs. Spindle said, as if anyone in the room hadn't noticed this. I'm sorry, Stuart said, feeling his ears begin to blow up. I had to fill in about a hundred holes. I'm the one who dug them, not some dangerous criminal. Oh, Stuart, laughed Mrs. Spindle. Stop pulling my leg. Stuart sank into, sank into his seat, stunned. Why would she say that? He wasn't even close enough to pull her leg. Plus, why would he want to? He sighed. It was hopeless. Even though he was wearing all his clothes, and even though he had remembered not to drink anything this morning, he was still going to have a bad day. Math was first. Today's lesson was the number 12. Most of the kids already knew about 12. They knew it was also called a dozen. They knew it was 10 plus two or six plus six. Stuart knew about 12 too. So far, so good. And then Miss Spindle said something so wonderful, Stuart could hardly believe his ears. Now class, was the wonderful thing she said, I want you each to draw a picture for 12. Finally. Here was his chance to make up for all the bad starts. He had been the best drawer in his old school. If another kid drew a mouse, people might think it was a zucchini squash or a hat. There was no way to tell. But if Stuart drew a mouse, everyone knew it was a mouse, even grown-ups. That's how good he was. He wanted to draw something really fabulous now, something so good all the kids would fight with one another to see who could be the best friend of such a great artist. He took his special drawing pencil from the pocket of his cape and began. Stuart worked so hard he lost track of time. This happens to artists a lot. Pretty soon, all the other kids were crowded around his desk to see what was taking so long. Here is what they saw. Twelve students. There were 12 students in Mrs. Spindle's third grade class, and every one of them was on Stuart's paper. Stuart knew it was one of his best drawings, very detailed. Still, his heart thudded with dread. Drawing people could be tricky. You never knew how people might react. They might get mad if you left off their ears or made their feet look a tiny bit like bananas. There's me, shouted Olivia. Stuart drew all my barrettes. Awesome, cried Nacho. My feet look like bananas. All the kids were so happy to find themselves in Stuart's drawing. Let's show Mrs. Spindles, they said. Stuart was secretly very proud, but he just said, well, okay, if you want to. But where was Mrs. Spindles? Olivia called down the hall. Nacho checked the playground. Just like your drawing, Nacho said. Twelve kids and no teacher. Stuart looked at his drawing. He looked at his pencil. He looked at his cape. Of course. Don't worry, he told the other kids calmly, as if losing a teacher were the most normal thing in the world. Things like this happen to me all the time. I'll just have to draw Mrs. Spindles to bring her back. No problem. But there was a problem. No room on the paper. The 12 students filled up the classroom. The swing set filled up the playground. There was only one place left to put her. Help, Mrs. Spindles voice floated down into the classroom. I don't know what's gotten into me. I seem to have climbed up onto the roof. Don't worry, Stuart called up to her. I'll draw you a ladder. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't draw a ladder. Even though he had been the best draw drawer in his own old school, too many straight lines. Stuart tried again and again and again. He tried 12 times, 12 ladders, each too crooked to use. Stuart began to panic. Probably no kid in the history of the third grade had ever put a teacher on the roof. He was going to jail for life, unless he could think of think up a terrific idea. And then he did just that. Hold on, he called up to Mrs. Spindles. You'll be on the ground in a few seconds. Stuart erased Mrs. Spindles' old legs and gave her some new reach-the-ground ones. Mrs. Spindles' new long legs waved wildly past the windows. The other kids dove for cover under their desk. Oh dear, cried Mrs. Spindles. What in the world has happened? How will I tie my shoes? How will she walk around, wondered Stuart. How will she fit in the classroom? And whatever made me think this was a good idea? Hang on, he called, trying to sound cheerful. He got a big piece of paper. 
I'm going to start all over. Stuart bit his bottom lip to concentrate. Very carefully, he drew Mrs. Spindles inside the classroom with normal legs. He drew 12 desks and a flag and a chalkboard. He drew Smiling Ed, the class turtle, and Sparky and Pal, the hamsters. It was the best drawing of his career, but it wasn't done. Stuart grinned. Outside, where there was plenty of room, he drew 12 kids all playing together. Stepping onto the bus going home, Stuart had the feeling something was missing. It wasn't a bad something was missing feeling, like if you forgot to put your pants on. It was a good something was missing feeling, like if the poison ivy between your toes were finally gone. He took a seat in front of Nacho and tried to think what it was. Nacho tugged on his cape. Will you draw me some longer legs, he asked Stuart, like you did with Mrs. Spindles. Stuart studied Nacho. Nacho was short like he was, but at least Stuart had a tall neck. Nacho was just plain short all over. In fact, he was the only kid in third grade shorter than Stuart. This was too bad for Nacho, but very good for Stuart. That's what was missing. Stuart wasn't worried anymore. He wasn't the shortest kid in the class. He hadn't thrown up from an egg salad smell. He hadn't forgotten everything he'd learned in second grade, and he hadn't gotten stuck in the bathroom at least not for very long. And even though he hadn't made any friends, the other kids had played with him. It felt weird not having anything to worry about, but good. Still, Stuart would have drawn Nacho longer legs if he could have, even though it would have made him the shortest kid in third grade. You can put sandwiches in your shoes to make yourself taller, he told Nacho. That's what I do sometimes. Ham and cheese is the best. Tuna fish is not so good. But I can't draw you longer legs. My cave doesn't work that way. I only get one thing a day, one adventure. That's okay, Nacho said. I can wait until tomorrow. Stuart shook his head. It doesn't work like that either. It's a different thing every day. Just then, Olivia stuck her legs across the aisle. My legs are exactly the right length, she said. But if I had longer hair, I could wear more barrettes. So tomorrow, you can draw me with longer hair, right down to my ankles. That would be a different thing. Stuart sighed. It was hard to have to keep saying no. I'm sorry, every day the different thing that happens is a surprise to me. I never know what it will be, and I don't get to choose. He turned his head to the window. Nacho and Olivia wouldn't want to talk to him anymore. Nacho tugged on his cape again. I get it, it's like the ties in your cape. Each one is different. Stuart hadn't thought of this. Nacho was right. Olivia leaned over and whacked him with her pocketbook. I like surprises, she said. Surprises are presents. Olivia was right, too. Olivia and Nacho stood up to leave at the bus stop before Stewart's. Tomorrow is Saturday, Nacho said. We'll come over early. Right, Olivia agreed, so we don't miss anything. When Stewart jumped off the bus, his cape streamed around him in a gigantic grin. The end. I hope you enjoyed Stuart Goes to School.